she was the most awesome friend I ever had in my life. And I, when she was going to walk down to, we used to call it Mo Brown's, um, oh. down to the cafe downtown and get cigarettes. I told her, I said, Laura, please don't. You know, it's late and I don't want you going by yourself. Oh, I'm the big girl because I watched her fucking, she was a hot tender for her dad. And I watched her walk up a, a metal ladder with two five-gallon buckets of hot tar and never even touched the ladder. You know, I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't no weakling. Yeah. So, whatever he'd get to her to get her into that car or whatever, I don't know. Yeah. But, and then, I, you know, we, and that was Halloween night, and then Thanksgiving Day, they showed up at my mom and dad's front door wanting to know when the last time anybody seen her was, and everybody's like, at beverages, at beverages, at beverages. I'm like, oh, hell no. You guys just like to screw me out like a guy shark Comanche. <laughs> Uh -huh. And so yeah. Lehigh PD shows up at my house. Well, then the feds show up at my house. Wow. But, but she'd been missing almost a month, you know, before anybody even reported her missing. And they, nobody would still report her missing. You know, I couldn't report her just being a friend. You know, it had to be a family member because I tried. Yeah. And they wouldn't let me. Well, you, you, it has to be a family member. Why? My girlfriend's missing. She didn't miss it for this many days. You know, find her. Well, she's just a runaway. She's not a runaway, guys. She's missing. You know, so there wasn't nothing I could do. And then Thanksgiving Day, somebody found her up in Mercer Port Canyon hiking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, she, um, she took me off and she'd stay with, with me and my, my mom and dad for a little bit. You know, my dad let her sleep out in the camper. Oh. You know, no big deal. And, I mean, she kind of crashed around everybody's house in Lehigh. Okay. You know? Okay. It, it, but she was she was a hell of a good friend. She was bubbly. She the the personality I have right now about I don't give a fuck about life, you know. I have to laugh about it. Yeah. She, that's the way she was. Nice. Nice. You know, and I I, I think back now and it's like, man, I kinda act like Lori used to do you know. It makes me wonder if she didn't know that it was her time. She, she's not black, she's better than black. She's just a good friend that my mom and dad took in because her parents kicked her out when she was 13. And my my dad told her, it's all right, get your ass down here, keep your ass in school, that's all I ask of you. Yeah. And you can stay here, you know? Where do you, where do you remember seeing Ted? Did, did Was he skulking around? He would come... Yeah, he would come into Mole Browns and just kind of hang out, you know. And that was where we'd, all us teenagers in town hung out. You know, we'd go down there and play pool or foosball or whatever, you know, or just go down there and hang out, yeah. you know. And he he just showed up in town one day and didn't leave until after Laura was dead. Wow. And he he disappeared like two days later, you know, after she'd left my mom's house on the Halloween night. And I kept telling him, but there's something wrong. This this is not right. He disappears, and then all of a sudden, you know, Laura's gone. Nobody can find her, and, and nobody can, you know. And I didn't know how to get a hold of her parents. Yeah. You know, to have them, to have them, you know, turn in a missing persons report, you know, or even if they would have, you know, because she was always on the go. Yeah, right. And, you know, and that was the sad part. You know? What do you remember? I mean, do you remember him ever like saying anything or any any of his weird behavior when you guys were seeing him around? He would just he would just sit and stare at the girls. Okay. And it kind of, it would give me this eerie I don't know eerie feeling yeah. like the you know, the hairs on the hairs on the back of your head is stand up. And he was always talking to Laura. That was the thing. And I always told her girlfriend. Don't go any place with him. I don't trust him. You know, and I don't know what it was, but there was just something about him that, you know. And he was driving a little yellow Volkswagen when we first met him. Yeah. Um. What did you do? You, did you get the impression that uh, that she liked him, or she was impressed with him, or she liked having him around? No. Or? No, but she was a nice girl. You know, she talked to everybody. Okay. So, 
So when he would when he would go seeking her out, she wouldn't she wouldn't tell him to f off or whatever. Oh yes, she would. She tell him, "Fuck you, keep your eyes on me. I'm not your eye candy." Right. I mean, she never missed no words. Right. But at the same time, she would she would spend time and and bullshit with him if if he was insistent. Well. Yeah, exactly, if he was insistent. You know, because he'd come back while we was playing foosball. I don't know if you know what a foosball table is or not. Oh, yeah, I love foosball. But he'd, <laughs> he'd come back there, and he'd just stand at the end of the foosball table and just sit and talk to her. And so, dude, dude, you're breaking my fucking concentration. Get the fuck out of here. Leave me the fuck alone. And, you know, and he would leave and then all the my big brother and all the other guys in town and have to tell him, look, back the fuck off, Chuck, or we're going to kick ass on you. And he still wouldn't. Wow. And I think, it was, I think it was Jerry Bowers that finally kicked his ass one day. So how, how did you how did you uh, originally meet Laura back in the day? Um, down at Mole Brown's. Okay, okay. That's that's where everybody met at, at one given point or time. Okay. Right next to right next door to the Lehigh Drug Store. Okay. Did you guys did you guys hang out at another place called the Naughty Pine at all? Yeah, that's what it was. Oh, that's the same place. Yeah, same place. But see, we call it Mole Browns. <laughs> oh. <laughs> The guy's name was Mr. Brown, but he had this great big old wart on his face. <laughs> so, you know, it was a nickname. So we probably should never date the man, but, you know, hey, we're just teenagers. Yeah, what did we know? <laughs> well, so who were some of the, can you, can you remember some of the people that were around when that was all going on around the whole Ted and Laura thing besides mm-hmm. Jerry Bowers? Um, my big brother, William Beveridge, uh, Pauline Bowers, um, D. Bowers, uh, God, um, who else? Jody Nelson, but she's deceased now, which was my best friend. She just died last month. Okay. Um, Jerry Bowers is deceased. Dee Bowers is deceased. Um, about the only one out of this whole crew that's left is me and my big brother. I remember uh, Vera Campbell? That's my big sister. That's okay. I thought that was your sister. Okay. She used to work at Mo Brown's. She did. And, she, yeah. and that's, that's why we hung out there, you know, because we got everything for free. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Vera said that um, she saw Laura get into uh, Ted's car from Mo Brown's. She probably did because she worked down there. Okay. And and we was home at my mom and dad's house partying, you know. And that's what I hated about the show is because they put us all in costumes, you know. And there was, I mean, there was a lot of things in the show that was true facts. But then, again, there was a lot that wasn't, sure. you know. Were you, what were you guys doing on Halloween night? Was it just a big drinking party or? Just, yeah, that's how we was doing. We're sitting up at my mom and dad's getting drunk. Because uh, my mom was on the semi with my dad, you know, back in Nebraska. And first thing my mom and dad told us when they left the, left the yard, do not have a party. Well, what did we do? Had a party. Because we as <laughs> teenagers, tell us not to, we're going to. You know? <laughs> you don't tell a teenager not to because they're going to do just the total opposite. <laughs> and that's when, when dad found out about it, and he's like, God damn it, Myrtle Marin, I'm going to kick your ass. I'm like, Daddy, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> oh, I, if I post- Laura, Laura gave me my first peyote button, and I didn't know you were supposed to take the center out of them, because that was poison. And I ate it, and st- I started getting real sick. She's like, Rennie, did you take the center out? And I'm like, no, was I supposed to? She said, yeah, with an ice cream scoop. With little, you know, the, the little ice cream, tiny ice cream scoops. Yeah. I'm like, well, nobody told me that. I said, way to go, thanks. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, she got me high the first time on, on, on peyote buttons. <laughs> 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 but it was fun. <laughs> and then, 
I can remember one time we went out to West Canyon. It was long before uh, Camp Williams was going out there and playing Army. And we all decided to, me, Jody, and her decided to climb up the face of this cliff one day, one night. And we climbed up, but we couldn't get back down. We had to wait till the next day. Yeah. You know, so, but, you know, I mean, there's there's good memories there. And I can remember one time me and Laura sneaked off through the weeds to go to the bathroom and find all kinds of live ammo from Camp Williams. Oh, wow. And then it was like a couple, oh, probably about six months later, Camp Williams started going out there and playing Army, and we'd go out there and have our cagers, and then when the guys got killed, they'd come over and party with us. <laughs> 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 and they'd always tell her, you sure are the key. She, yeah, and I know it. Don't you wish you could have it? <laughs> <laughs> so she was apparently, she was pretty pretty drunk that night that she disappeared. Oh, we were smashed, dude. We had a jungle juice that night. Okay. I know we, me and her never eat, drink the liquids. We always eat the food. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> you get more fucked up on the food because that's where all the alcohol would go to. And I didn't know that and she's the one that taught me that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the old high school, junior high, right across the street from my mom and dad's house. Okay, that's where that happened. Okay. Yep. You know, and, and that's the thing is, all of us was too young to buy alcohol. Yeah. And so he'd, he'd go buy or go, you know, he'd go get a case of beer and come back and, hey, you guys want a beer? Uh, you know, so he'd kind of tried to buy, buy his way in. And Jerry would always tell dude, you can bring all the beer you want, but, you know, you're still not going to be a part of our game. And we wasn't no fucking game. We was just t stupid teenagers. You know, but I guess back then, I guess you would consider this a game. And nowadays, you know, because if, if there was one, there was all. Yeah. All for one and one for all, you know. And that was always our motive. All for one and one for all. Well, there's that, that old fact, story you hear about how Ted came up to you guys when you were sitting there and he started stuffing leaves down her shirt or something like that. Yep. Well, he, he would sit there and pull the grass uh -huh. out of the lawn. And he put that down her shirt. Okay. Okay. And that, that's when Jerry told him, enough's enough, you know. He was that... In, in, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Insistent. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, uh, on Laura, he was bound determined he was going to have her. All the parties and shit was always at my mom and dad's house because my dad was a long distance truck driver, uh -huh. never home. And my mom would always go with him. You know, when he was a teenager, she didn't need to sit home with us and babysit. You know? Right. And yeah, he showed up one day at my mom and dad's door and I don't remember who it was that answered the door. But they're like, you know, you're not welcome here. Get the hell off the porch. And that's back when, when my mom and dad had an old wood porch. Yeah. Sure. And, um, I want to say, I want to say, um, I want to say it was my brother Bill that answered the door that day. Okay. But I'm not, I'm not positive. I mean, like I said, I'm, you're pulling cobwebs out now. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, he just put, I mean, Bill's no bigger than what I am. You know, I mean, well, maybe a little bit nowadays because I got bone cancer. But, um, Bill, I mean, he just pushed my brother over like he was fucking not even there. I come into my mom and dad's front room. And Laura went out. See, my mom and dad had, had we, we went in through, through the kitchen into the house. Okay. But there was one a door almost side by side that went into the front room. But we, my dad always had that one blocked off. No, we didn't use that door. And when he came in, in to the front room after Laura, 
I told her, I said, cool, I'll go to the room door. And she went out the front room door, and all the guys are like, stood in front of both doors, and they're like, leave her the fuck alone, goose. Yeah. You know, what part of, do you not understand me? She does not want none to do with you. And he was insistent that she was going to be with him. Yeah. John said, look, just leave me alone. I don't want nothing to do with you. And that didn't even work, you know? Wow. The more, I, I, I swear to God, the more people would tell him to back off, the more he was insistent on it, uh, being with her, you know? Wow. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, he was just a pushy bastard, yeah. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't call him a bastard, because bastard is the best part of a man. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and he was, he was a man, because if he was a man, he would have never done that. Yeah. She was crying. Okay. Oh, hell, it's like, probably about 10, 10, 30 when she walked downtown. Okay. Because okay. Mo Brown's closed at 11 o'clock. Oh. And she's like, well, if I go right now, I'll be able to get, go get a pack of cigarettes, you know, or a couple packs of cigarettes. We all have cigarettes, and nobody ever seen her again. Jesus Christ. Wow. You know, and, and she was old enough to buy cigarettes, just not old enough to buy her alcohol, right. you know. And that's where he would come in, you know, trying to butter her up. Well, I'm going to buy you guys his alcohol. Well, I'll go buy it. It's not going to make a difference, and that's exactly what it should tell him. I'm sure that probably didn't help the situation either. 